What's up guys, Mark back here with yet another video and today I'm going to be rapping about the Ultimate Camera. Over the last couple of years I've had plenty of time to play around with uh, lots of different Sony gear, but I have never yet to this point found one that I think that is absolutely positively perfect. Uh, not only for me, but for a lot of other people. So I don't know if any of the Sony engineers or the Sony product managers or anything are ever going to watch this video, but if they do, this would be the time to get out your pens and your pads and start taking some notes because this is cumulative, cumulative <laughs> knowledge uh, from not only myself, but for many, 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 many other shooters of Sony or people that have ever looked at Sony and maybe voted against it and bought something else because of certain issues, problems, or what have you. I'm actually proposing something completely new. There are a lot of things that I like about the Sony A5000 line. There are things that I like about the Sony A6000 line. There are things that I love about the A7 line. And there are things that I like tremendously about the Sony A99. So, but none of them address all of these problems all in one. And because they exist in all the different platforms, I do believe that all of them can be brought together into a, um, a completely new creature. Um, I don't want all of these features in something that we have now. I don't want stuff just slapped on or added to or something like that. I just don't think that it would work. So ultimately, this is my wish list. Now, it may be feasible, it may not be. I know that most of these things all exist only in different formats across the entire Sony camera line. So this is my proposal in order to bring all of these things together. And I'm gonna start off with something pretty basic. And that is, uh, especially for the A6000 line, the time-lapse app has got to go. There's absolutely no reason that that function should not already be built into the camera. Uh, not to mention, the fact that uh, it's a little wonky, it's a little odd, and on top of that, it costs $10. Uh, then again, you add insult to injury by charging your uh, customers $10 extra for this functionality when most other, and I do mean most other, camera manufacturers have this automatically built in. This is not something that you should be paying extra for. This should just be built in. I think most of us can agree. Number two is gonna be the vertical grip and not just uh, an afterthought grip, you know, not just something that will add extra battery power, which that is a nice perk. Extra battery power for the cameras that exist are definitely needed. Uh, the, the batteries that are going into all of the A5000s, the A6000s, and the A7 line are severely inadequate for most working professionals. Anyone that wants to do anything for any amount of time has to carry about two or three batteries. Uh, I've never been a huge person to gripe about the battery situation because I think it's, you know, pretty damn easy overall. But I know that you all have bigger batteries. I know that the technology can be made to uh, do a better job. Uh, anyway, let me get past that. The vertical grip, though. Uh, this is the vertical grip for the Fuji X-T2, okay? This is an ingenious design. And I know that you guys involve, your own cell, uh, involve yourselves in industrial espionage. You should steal this shit. This is amazing stuff right here. If you have a baseline camera and you want to add some extra functionality via the vertical grip because it has the boost of power from two extra batteries, that's ingenious. That right there is just for goddamn ridiculously ingenious idea. Uh, and it would almost ensure that you got customers to purchase an extra accessory. Not only would it increase battery capacity uh, and battery life and, and function and the ability to, to go further and longer, you still have the option to remove it if you want to have a small package. And that's the main reason why a lot of people buy the Sony A6000 uh, line or the A7 uh, line is because it's a very, very small, light, and uh, much more compact form factor. But you want your customers to the ability to be flexible, so make it a little bit modular. Use something like this. This is an ingenious idea, but expand on this. Increase the, the, the functionality, go beyond this. Number three, the overheating. Um, like I said, I want this to be a completely new animal. So it doesn't have to be an A6000, it doesn't have to be an A7. It could be an A something new. Just call it that, A something new and um, make it so that you can fit a, a better, proper heat sink in it or whatever it takes because the other camera manufacturers, especially somebody like Panasonic, which 
literally has no problem with overheating in almost every single camera they build, I know we know that it's possible. Uh, your engineers need to step it up. They need to uh, do more. They need to, again, involve themselves in industrial espionage. Wink, wink. It's possible. We know that it's possible. So when you blame, you know, uh, physical characteristics or limitations, stuff like that, uh, to, uh, to a degree, I believe you, but ultimately I think that it can be solved. Uh, maybe just that, that overheating engineer, maybe he's just, you know, going through a rough time. Maybe he didn't get enough sleep, but he needs to, you need to crack that whip and get on him and put a net on the window so he can't jump. That was a bad joke. My bad. Number four, we need a headphone jack. Okay, if you're going to tout in any way, shape, or form these cameras having amazing video features, okay, half of every video is audio. This needs to happen. Period, end of story. So this new camera absolutely positively must have a headphone jack. We need to be able to monitor uh, the end audio going into the camera, not the audio going into our sound system that records the audio, but the final output of the audio that's actually being recorded by the camera. That is just an absolute no-brainer. We don't need XLR. We can do, if we want to add that extra functionality via some sort of XLR adapter, whether it be Sony's branded one or a Beach Tech or something like that, uh, but we still need the audio uh, monitoring capability via the camera. It's just, we can't get past that. That's got to happen. And we know that it can happen, and it doesn't take up very much space. I mean, it's very, very small component. There's absolutely no reason you can't find a little extra room in this new camera. It may not be possible in the A6000 line. I question that. But in this new one, you're going to find room. You're going to find the space in order to make that happen. Number five, external knobs, wheels, and buttons. I just want to tell you, Sony, I love you. you. You all have made some amazing things. You all have really innovated. You all have really cranked out the features. But this new camera, this new animal that we're discussing here, it's got to have external knobs, wheels, and buttons. Again, I'm going to refer you to the Sony or the Fuji X-T2. This thing is beautiful, okay? Uh, maybe not the whole thing, but th this top profile, having exposure compensation, having your ISO, having your shutter speed all right there, frees up nine-tenths of the things that, you know, we've got to go into menus and stuff for, or use some clunky button system that's a little mushy and it doesn't feel very tactile, it doesn't feel very positive when we mess around with that four-way dial on the back. This, you need to do 110% on this new camera. Maybe not the A6000, maybe not the A7s, but on this new camera, this needs to be done. Uh, as a matter of fact, the top profile of this camera is so amazing, I'm even thinking about picking one up myself just so I can pediddle with it uh, until you all get one of these things figured out. Uh, this is basic functionality, and I think more and more people are rediscovering the joys of analog. You see tons of people going back to mechanical keyboards. You, see, you hear tons of people uh, griping and complaining about the show, uh, shallow travel on the new Apple MacBook Pros uh, on the keys. They were just bad. People in general love some level of tactile sensation and function. And if you happen to get around to it and you start designing some new lenses, uh, your Sony 50mm f1.4 with its external analog aperture ring was so nice. But make it so that the, uh, the, uh, the aperture can be switched off so that it could be smooth for video. Again, which is going to help you tout your video features even that much more. Number six, the A99 Mark II. That screen... I love that screen. That's a great job. That is a very functional thing, and that's on a professional camera. So we know that it can be done on the lower end cameras uh, with full touch. Uh, I don't know what's going on. You all make cell phones that have full touch. So you and your cell phone guys need to get together and make that happen. That right there, that is amazing. It flips up, it's functional, it twists around, it goes down, it goes left, it goes right, it does everything. Exactly what, not only professionals, for people that want to get up really high and down really low, but also people that do videos just like this. I'm having to use your phone app to monitor myself, which 
is okay. It's not bad, but I would much rather be able to just check right above the lens and check my framing. You know what I'm saying? So, number seven, the improved app usability. Speaking of the app, this app is fine, um, but you've already got plenty of you know little things and such as built into this app. Improve that functionality. You've got to make it easier for the app to connect to the camera, uh, at least initially. It's horrendous trying to get these two things to talk to each other initially. Uh, near field communication helps, but for us iPhone people uh, that do not have just a, a standard N NFC chip, uh, it's really brutal. That needs to be improved. Uh, touch to focus via the app in video mode. That would be a welcome addition. I would love to see that. You need your design team, in my personal opinion, to really go back to the drawing board uh, and design this app to have as much possible functionality via the app so that we don't have to touch the camera. Vlogging is a job now. It is a profession. And a lot of people depend on this style of shooting in order to get stuff done. So expanding the app's uh, functionality and usability would go a long way with the uh, blogger, vlogger community. Number eight, remapping any button on this brand new camera. Any button should be able to be remapped. And the fact that you're now gonna have aperture rings on all your new lenses for this, this particular camera, which could be E-mount, E or EF, I don't care. Um, and you're also gonna have exposure compensation, shutter speed, uh, and ISO all readily available right on top. The other things, especially that crazy record button, everything should be able to be remapped. Anything should be able to be remapped to any other button on your camera. Some people like to shoot certain ways. Some people like to shoot uh, very specific when they shoot certain things. And having the ability to remap those buttons to other buttons it should be a no-brainer. This is a digital system. These are not dedicated buttons. You, you should allow all the functions to be remapped. Just saying. Uh, this is actually number nine, not number eight. Uh, larger battery capacity. Make this camera a specific size that will accommodate all of these things. They don't have to be anything. It doesn't have to be anything specific. But if you have to increase the uh, battery capacity, and I'm going to suggest that the minimum battery capacity be somewhere the minimum be somewhere around 3,000 milliamp hours. It's just me. But that is a good solid starting point. The grip would be thick enough and chunky enough that it would accommodate a lot of different users out there. Um, it would be ergonomic. It would fall somewhere, maybe even in between the size of an A7 line and an A99 line. It could be somewhere in there. It doesn't have to be. Uh, but that's my suggestion. Imp increase the battery capacity of these cameras. Uh, not only would it help professionals go longer and further with uh, wedding shoots or shoots where it takes a lot of patience, maybe babies or animals or something like that where you've just constantly got to be wrapping out shots, you've constantly got to be bursting in order to try to capture that perfect moment. A lot of these professionals have to swap batteries out and during that battery swappage they're missing these shots. Uh, so doubling or even tripling the battery capacity in your all's situation would go a long, long way with a lot of working pros. So like I said, I want this to be a new animal, Sony. It doesn't have to be anything that you've already made up before. Uh, get your design team together, make this thing happen. And for all of you all that are watching, if I missed anything that you guys may have wanted to see in my list and I didn't happen to include it, drop those things down in the comment section below because maybe I missed something that I really wanted to see as well. So, at any rate guys, thanks again for stopping here at the Photo Video Show. I'm your host, Mark Pocket, and I will see you guys again on the next one.